I call this meeting of the Connor Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. It is 6 p.m. Uh, if you will, stand with me, please. That's Mr. Uh, Hubert to lead us in the invocation and Mr. Sanders in the pledges. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have. We are grateful for the beautiful weather that we receive. We're grateful for the opportunity that we as board members have to serve and the community has to come and participate and listen to the meeting. We ask that thy spirit be upon us and, and uh, help guide us through, uh, through this meeting today. And we say in Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Please join me as we honor our state and our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the basic flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hubert and Mr. Sanders. Um, uh, a personal uh, point here, um, and the rest of the board was not aware of this, uh, including Mr. Hubert, uh, before uh, the prayer, but would ask that you keep uh, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, Daytron Williams family, in, in, uh, in your thoughts and prayers uh, uh, at the loss of uh, his wife, Maya's father. So I would ask that y'all would remember them as, uh, as appropriate. Uh, item number two, uh, A, Dr. Stockton, Special District Recognition, 2015 UIL Class 6A, Girls 100-Yard Backstroke State Champion. Well, we're excited to have this item on the board and, and have our recipient here. I'll ask Dr. Povich, principal of the ninth grade campus of the Woodlands, to come up and introduce. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Stockton. It's an honor to be here before you, uh, representing the Woodlands High School and the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus. I have the honor of introducing our five-time state champion swim coach, Coach Kent Kirchner, and he's going to talk about a very dedicated and talented student athlete. First off, I'd like to thank the Lord for bringing our family here 16 years ago and two grandsons too, and uh, very happy about that. And I want to thank the board for all your tireless work that you do and Dr. Stockton. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Lucy here. Um, something at the state meet that happened, uh, She usually the kids come up to me and ask me for advice before they swim, so on and so forth, and Lucy came up to me and I was at a total loss is what to say to her. And I said, you know what, Lucy, if you win this event, you're gonna meet Dr. Stockton and the school board in person, okay? And she won the Hunter Backstrom. No, that's, that's, not, that's not entirely what happened, okay? But what, what really happened was Lucy came up to me and uh, she, said, she said, you know what, I'm gonna win this thing because I hate losing. And I knew she was going to win Ooh, right yeah. after that. Uh, Lucy's mom is with her right here today, and that's Dr. Nordman. And Lucy is just one of the finest athletes that I've ever had the opportunity to coach. And she's very athletic, very good in underwaters, on her backstroke, and just destroyed people. So we're really happy to have her. And this, I hope this is going to be an annual event for her. So I really appreciate everything that you've done. Lucy, do you want to come on up? thank you you have just shown what an amazing athlete at your level I, I can't even imagine um, I do sprint triathlons and oh my word I'm amazed so we want to present you with this thank and you. I know that uh, she'd like to get a couple of pictures so why don't we step out from the okay. podium <laughs> Yeah. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Coach, for all you do. Appreciate you. Thank you for everything. Dr. Norman, we know you're very proud. We appreciate you sharing her with CISD, okay? See you next year. <laughs> right. See you next year. <laughs> Thank you. Item 2B, uh, Citizen Participation. Secretary, do we have anybody signed up? <clears throat> Very good. How about that? Okay. Item 3 is the consent agenda, and I have been requested to pull two items. Uh, Mr. Hubert wants to discuss item F, and Dr. Stockton has asked that we pull and discuss item N, as in Nancy. So I would uh, entertain a motion for uh, the consent agenda minus F and N. So moved. Thank you. Second. And the second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah. All those opposed like sign. Raise your hand or something, whatever. Okay. Now if we uh, will go back and uh, deal with item F, uh, uh, 3F, excuse me, approval and application of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Grant 2015. I'll ask Dr. Hines to come to the podium and answer any questions that we have on this. Okay, I, I just had a couple of questions. Um, I like that we're doing this, obviously. Um, but my question is, is the uh, the grant is for 392. Is that a is that a one time one year grant? Is that it, it would if we were awarded the grant, it would be a one time one year grant award, and there's no matching funds required. Right. So, do we have an idea as to how we would how would we spend this money? Would we spend this money in one year? I mean, I, I'm just curious. It, it's it basically is three components. It's mm -hmm. uh, staff development. It's a big part of the cost. Um, so for some summer training and uh, summer days, another big part of the cost are materials for the safe and civil schools materials. And then the third part was if we added some social workers and it would be their salary through that year. I saw that. I saw it down here that was the addition of four social workers. So that was my my biggest question was, um, you know, we had if we use this money and we do add the four social workers. Uh, and I understand this is just a, an application on which I've. I'm certainly in favor of doing, but is this something that we would need to in, include in a, in a budget moving forward? Is this just a would we would we apply for this grant on an annual basis? How would we how would um, we do that? Actually, this is a we've started working on safe and civil schools last year as part of an ongoing effort. We want to get better at student behaviors and and, and working with student behaviors. <laughs> Uh, so we've started this kind of way of accelerating and kickstarting that and doing that a little faster with more schools because there's a cost associated with the training and the materials and and so on. Um, and so we looked at that grant as a way to do it. And, the, and the, really the object of the grant is to um, work with students to identify um, positive behavior support early to avoid them from escalating into to worse behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so that's really kind of the goal. Um, and we would actually our plan would be to do it for a year. Um, but we think this would get us kick started and obviously we'd look at applying again and see how it goes evaluate when we participate in grants we always go through an ongoing evaluation process because sometimes it works out well and sometimes we think no we don't need to continue this so there would be an evaluation piece as well okay very good those, those are the questions I had I, I, I love it I like the idea I know it's something we desperately need to continue to to move forward with and, and work with. I just want to know a little bit more sure. about it. So thank you. Do we have that in a motion? Yes, sir. <laughs> I second the motion. And, and we have a second. Any further discussion? All those signify by, in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed like sign and the motion passes. And uh, item uh, 3N, ratification of agreed order with the uh, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Dr. Stock. We'd like to spend some time giving a little more explanation on this item. I'll ask Mrs. Gladys to present sure, it. Dr. Stockton. In January this year, the district received a letter from the TCEQ, and it was something called a notice, a notice of Enforcement Action Letter. And it pertained to events that occurred in 2009, the district failing to post a notice of an unacceptable test sample report and that notifying the district that it didn't comply with the previous request that it conduct biannual tests or twice a year testing starting in 2009. 
and it referred to a letter, well, and, and in that, they, they said that they had, um, we learned during the process that they had sent us a letter in July 2009 after the district submitted results um, that one of its 20 samples submitted at that time showed um, an, an unusual amount of lead and copper, not within the parameters the state requires. And so um, the TCQ said they sent us a letter in two, July 2009 in response to that. We don't have a record of receiving the letter. It doesn't mean that we didn't, but we, we have been unable to locate it and we're unaware of it. And consequently, as a result of that, we did not do um, testing twice a year beginning in 2009 going forward. Um, so, but we did, but we had tested. The state requires testing on a three-year cycle and we did conduct that test. And in addition to the routine testing we did, we tested, the TCEQ themselves tested in 2010 and then in 2014, TCEQ requested that we do two tests twice during that year of the same well, and we did those tests as well. And all of the tests that have done since that one sample of 20 have been within the acceptable ranges under state law. So the water well has been fine since 2009, but it is true um, that we did not do the testing that they required us to do in 2000, beginning in 2009. So when they send you a letter like this, they um, uh, say that if you, because you failed to do what they asked you to do, they're going to take certain steps against you. And, but they, because we, our staff offer, visited with them and explained our situation, and we talked about the pause that the tests had all been uh, within range, the TCQ offered to do an agreed order, which is a, a typical response from them, that if you um, agree to pay a reduced fine, um, you don't have to admit that you've, you know, engaged in any misconduct. We just, it resolves the matter going forward. And so because we believed um, what the original uh, enforcement action was going to require was the dis district to continue testing twice yearly, which is very expensive, and submitting those test results to TCEQ, and it had a, a higher administrative penalty. They reduced the administrative penalty and eliminated all the testing requirements, and it would close the matter. Um, the one catch is that it had to be done by March 5th, and we didn't have um, a board meeting prior to that time. So the district um, determined it was in our um, best interest because the well has been clean, because we would not have to um, incur the additional testing costs. Um, and we, we feel confident that our water is, is very acceptable and good, and so we determined that we would go ahead and agree to the order and ask you to ratify it. And so that's what I'm asking you to ratify this evening is that agreed order that we submitted on March 5th. Thank you, Ms. Gladys. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? I have just a couple questions. Please. Uh, so, Mrs. Gladys, as I understand, the TCEQ eliminated the need for the additional testing in our agreed order. So the it sounds to me like there's not really any issues with our water. Correct. That, that would be my assumption. Mm -hmm. That's the assumption or presumption <laughs> that because they would, if there were, they would certainly have required additional testing. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and as I understand, in the 2009, there were 20 samples taken, and we had one sample that had two elements that were outside of whatever, but the other 19 were okay. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. And I think those facts all contributed to the point we're at today as well, that it was a very minor um, problem. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor of uh, ratifying uh, or for, I'm sorry, item number N, please raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And that passes. Thank you very much. Item 4A, instructional uh, material adoption for high school math, social studies, floral design, and fine arts. Dr. Stock. I'll invite Dr. Knoll to the podium to present this item. Good evening, <laughs> President, husbands, Dr. Stocks, and members of the board. The 2014-2015 CISD Textbook Committee has completed its review of the textbooks designated by the Texas Education Agency in Proclamation 2015 for adoption and use in school districts. Proclamation 2015 provides for the adoption of social studies, mathematics, fine arts, and CTE textbooks in grades K through 12. The CISD textbook committee members and subcommittee members have evaluated these textbooks and participated in a year-long review of the materials. The textbooks have been on display at the textbook warehouse for public view from November 1st through January 15th. Teachers and patrons have submitted evaluations and comments to the committee for consideration 
in the recommendation. The textbook committee met on January 20th, January 26th, and February 3rd and voted to recommend the following list of books to the Board of Trustees for ordering. Before we seek your approval of that list, we'd first like to thank those who have worked so hard to make this list finalized. First, we'd like to extend a heartfelt thanks to all of our wonderful teachers who have shared their expertise throughout this process. A complete list of those teachers is included in your board book. And representing our curriculum and instruction department here tonight, and I would just ask that they stand when I say your name just so we can recognize you for your hard work. Holly Berger, Don Venus, Chris Reichelt, Darren Carlisle, Pat Paris, and Edith Upshaw. Thank you all so much for your great efforts. At this time, we seek your approval of the list as submitted. I have a motion. So Mr. President, uh, I second the motion. Thank you. Um, question is second. Any further discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you. <clears throat> Passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item 5A, uh, selection of DBR uh, engineers for phase two of the LED lighting project district-wide. Dr. Stockton. Now, Mr. Foster, please present these items. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure tonight to request your approval to select DBR engineers for phase two of the LED lighting project. If you recall, we recently completed what, what was now phase one, mm -hmm. where we replaced a lot of T12, uh, which is the oldest fluorescent technology fixtures with LED fixtures. <clears throat> when we reported the completion of that project uh, not too long ago, we promised to look further into it, see if we can maximize uh, the benefit of that new technology moving forward. <clears throat> At this time, we're asking you to approve assigning DBR engineers to a project so that we can do that investigation and bring forward at a, at a later date a, a project for your approval to, to continue that endeavor to increase our efficiency and ho hopefully bring down our energy cost in the district. DBR engineers are recommended for this selection uh, for this project because the district believes that they're highly qualified and they successfully completed this job for us in what is now phase one. And they've demonstrated competency in this effort and their qualifications have been provided to the district uh, and they can provide this at a fair and reasonable price. The approval we're asking for tonight is the assignment of them to the project and the delegation of Dr. Stockton to negotiate and approve a contract for them to design this project. This time I ask for your approval. The motion. Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? What I have one question, sir. Mr. Foster. The, so this is an engagement just to determine the scope of the project. Is it, Th this is indeed. Is a, the scope of the project outlined? No. Uh, the the purpose of the thing is to this, for this project is to help us determine the scope. Okay. So we're engaging them to determine the scope of the project. That is that is correct. Okay. And then at that time. That will come back to the board? Yes. Okay, that's what I yeah, want to make sure of. At the time we're successful developing a project with a set budget and right. a set scope, we'll bring that back to the board. So my next question is, how long do you think that will be? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's lots of moving parts in right. it. Right. So we're going to spend a, uh, a great deal of time going through each of our buildings uh, with a fine-tooth comb, determining where the oldest fixtures are, working with, the, uh, with our utility provider to maximize the rebates that are available to us now. The rebates we were after on what is now phase one, uh, those rebates have expired. So now we're moving to another another phase of a, another rebate season. So the, the things that we're, we can replace and, and get that return on uh, are changing slightly. So the technology as it gets older and the older technologies get even older, those rebates are changing as well. So uh, I'm, I've been instructed by our, our uh, CFO to work methodically and slowly so that when we bring something back to you that we can bring back something with a substantial return on our investment. So to give you a time frame, um, I'd be kind guessing, uh, but I would hope to have something, uh, uh, a lot of the investigations done between now and the summer so that we can spend the, some of the summertime break really diving in and designing what we need to do. I think that's a great plan. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Item uh, uh, 5B, uh, select IBI architect 
uh, group architects for district CTE upgrade design services. Again, at this time, I'm asking for your approval uh, in the selection of IBI group architects uh, to design a project that we've called district CT upgrade. Uh, and we're engaging them to help us develop the scope as well. The project is not defined at this point, uh, but we need their services and their expertise to, to survey our campuses, work with our, uh, our uh, CTE department in developing uh, and, and vetting out the need uh, for individual programs and then finding places for them to fit within the district. So as we develop that project, we would actually, we would develop a budget and bring, bring something back for you to approve before we proceeded with any work. So this selection is merely assigning or engaging a design firm to, uh, to help us in that effort. We've selected IBI group architects based on their uh, recommendations or based on their uh, qualifications and uh, exemplified services uh, for other CTE programs in other areas of, of our uh, Gulf Coast region. So we feel like IBI Group Architects is, uh, demonstrates a high qualifications and a competency in this particular area, as well as the ability for us to negotiate a fair and reasonable price for these services. Again, this is a, an approval to assign them to this process and delegate Dr. Stockton to uh, negotiate and approve their contract for these services. At this time, I request your approval. Mr. President, I move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Foster. And uh, item 5C, uh, amendment of G, uh, GMP for Oak Ridge ninth grade campus additions covered walkway. Yes, sir. I, I'm, at this time, I request your approval for an amendment to the GMP uh, for Duratech, the contractor that's currently engaged on the renovations at the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus. This amendment will uh, be used to construct a covered walkway that will connect the senior high campus, uh, Oak Ridge High School, to the ninth grade campus to provide uh, cover so that the students in the transfer between those two buildings can have some, uh, some protection from bad weather. The price for this has been uh, established at $489,955. And with this amendment, the total contract cost for the Oak Ridge ninth grade uh, contract is $14,364,459. The funding for this portion, uh, I've been told, is coming from the general fund. Uh, I reported earlier it's coming up from the bond funds. But general funds are set aside to pay for this project at this time we request your approval. I have a motion. So made. Second. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? I have a question. Um, yes, <clears throat> first of all, when you when you go from the ninth grade campus you cross the our new road yep. that we just built. Mm -hmm. Yes sir. Will it cover over the road? It, it will not cover the road. And the okay. road is a county right away, so we will stop at either side of that, it. That's the first question. The second question is we have this similar issue at other campuses and are we going to address that inequity and I, that may be more of a dr stockton question but I, I i want it noticed that there's other kids getting wet going between band halls and classrooms and so on and so forth and i think fair is fair and it and it may be just in the line in many cases we've done it uh -huh. um in, the, in addition to conroe high school we've done the same they're shorter but we've done the same type of cover um, Armstrong Elementary, we were there on a field trip last yes. last month, um, uh, and there's several other examples of when we have the opportunity, we try to cover the kids. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? I, I'm looking at this. Am I correct? How wide is this going to be? Uh, the canopy is approximately canopy? 12 feet wide. 12 feet wide. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm good. <laughs> Maybe not all the blown rain. Well, but, but I'm just, it. you know, I mean, side rain coming in. I wanted to understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No. Nope. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And item passes. Uh, capital improvement update. Item uh, 5D. Now I'd like to give you an update for the capital improvement projects we have underway. We're going to start with the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. Currently this project is on schedule. Uh, we are uh, turning it over in phases. What you're looking at now is a, a completed uh, front entry uh, structure. 
So we turned over the, the use of the new admin section to the uh, to the school this past week. Uh, so you can see the interior finishes are in and the offices are set up. Now we get back to the classroom sections. The classrooms are on the schedule, uh, but they are coming in. We're nearing a point uh, for the classrooms where the building is what we call a dry condition, so where the windows and the roof and things are in. The finished brick will go on the outside, but what we're, we're seeking now is the uh, the effort to get to the point where the inside remains dry so we can work on finishing the interior while the exterior is in progress. At Oak Ridge Elementary, again, this project is on schedule. Uh, what you're looking at here is the expanded parking lot in front of that school. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an area also we're going to occupy for staging during the course of the construction to try to minimize the impact uh, with the clinic and other, other stuff attached to that building. Uh, we've got the, the slabs in for the mechanical room additions where we're actually creating more space uh, for the more efficient equipment that we're installing in this, in this campus. Uh, and like I said, that project is on, on schedule and on track. Uh, one more update for you is the, uh, not long ago we approved the project to, to move into phase two of our front door security project. Mm -hmm. That project is starting this week. The, uh, some of the wiring infrastructure is, uh, started yesterday as a matter of fact. So we're working through those campuses now doing wiring, things of that nature. The equipment is still arriving. So as that equipment comes in, they will go back with an equipment crew and start installing the equipment. The plan I mean, for that project is to have it active over the summer so that when we start school for next year, everything is commissioned and working properly. How many campuses is that affecting? The, on the second, I mean, on, I know we've done like, what, 30 of, or yeah, 35? We uh, we touched 31 campuses in the uh, in phase one. We're, we're touching 20 new campuses that get new equipment. We are going back to the original 31 to, to fix some of the bugs and add some additional features. Uh, a new phone at the principal desk is sick. They can operate uh, when they're there by themselves or with limited staff from their office. So we're, we're actually touching all 51 campuses that we touched, but 20 are getting new new front door buzzers. Nine campuses. Thank you. Any questions of uh, Mr. Foster? Are you glad to see the sun out here lately? <laughs> uh, I am. Uh, I know our football coaches and other athletic staff are sad to see the sun. That means they're going to be watering fields, but we're happy to get some work done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Foster, as always. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Uh, item uh, 6A, results of uh, CISD bond refunding uh, two, series 2015. Dr. Stockton. I'm very excited to introduce Mr. Cox to introduce our guest. President Husbands, members of the, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, as you know, we recently completed a, a bond refunding. Uh, and I'm happy to introduce John Roebuck, our financial advisor, is here tonight to make a presentation about the results of the refunding. John. Thank you, Mr. Cox, President Husband, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, I always appreciate coming out and sharing good news of the results of the bond sale. Uh, before use, it, I really get to use it while you got it. <laughs> well, before I get to the results, uh, I always like to go over the bond buyer index. This is the snapshot of the bond market. Uh, as it is today on a weekly average. Uh, I've marked on this chart where we sold the bonds. The rate was a 3.6 at the time we sold these bonds. And to kind of put that in perspective, um, the 11 year average, we were 78 basis points below that and we're 33 basis points up off of all time lows. With the district's high rating of AA2, AA, and the permanent school fund guarantee, we uh, had some major success in the market selling these refunding bonds. Oops. One way. Uh, again, like we presented before for the parameter order, we're looking at refunding 118 million nine hundred ninety-five thousand in bonds from the district's 2008-2009 A bonds, as they're listed there. The average rate on those bonds combined was a 5.267 percent, and I'll get to put that in perspective in a second. Source of uses of funds: uh, we were able to issue seven 117 million six hundred sixty-five thousand in bonds to refund the 118 thousand excuse me, thousand in bonds. Again, we had those bonds were refunded out at a rate of five point two six seven. We're able to bring those rates down to a three point four oh eight. Um, we we also received some premium uh, issuers or purchasers paid more for the bonds than the face value, so we're able to reduce the amount of bonds issued. And then highlighted there in green is the number y'all all are I want to see it's the $18,667,588 in savings. And then on the final page, 
this is how it shakes out. Uh, the far left is the, the district's current debt service requirements, less the bonds to be refunded, plus the bonds we sold in February, uh, with the resulting debt service and the savings there on the right column in yellow. It averages about $933,000 in savings a year for 20 years. And let me just clarify, I think we all understand this, but just for the record. Yes, sir. We did not extend durations, maturities. Yes, sir. We only cut interest rates. Yes, sir. And you can see that, the, the middle three columns there, they're all level. Yes, sir. They don't extend. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yes, very much. And the average, Beautiful. average life is about 15 years? It's average life is uh, 15.311 years. Okay. Yes, sir. I wonder you have a smile on your face. <laughs> it's easy selling y'all's bonds. <laughs> you are welcome back anytime. <laughs> y'all do a good job, and that's part of why it's so easy. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Anybody uh, have any other questions? No. Comments? Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item 6B, financial statements. Uh, Mr. Dr. Rice. <laughs> Good evening, President and Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of February. These statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. First statement we're going to look at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet includes assets, liabilities, and fund balances. In the assets column, uh, we always like to look at our cash and investments, get the detail of where our cash is and, and how our investments are working for so you can see where those are located. And also this time of year, we like to look at our, our collections from the tax office. As you can see, we're right about 97% where we've been, so we're trending well, so we feel very good about that. The next statement we're looking at is our income statement. It includes the revenues, expenditures, and fund balances. In the revenues, you have local and intermediate sources, state program, and federal. And the largest of the revenues are local and intermediates. We'll look at those, look at the detail. In the general fund and debt service, the largest revenue source is our property taxes. In food service, it comes from food sales. and self-funded insurance, it is from our premium contributions. We can also look at our expenditures at the functional level. If you look in the debt service column, you'll see under the debt service, the $59.7 million there, we made our February 15th debt service payment. <laughs> which the next year will be $900,000 less due to our savings. <laughs> uh, Self-funded insurance. For the year, we've had total revenues of $17,575,000. We've had expenses of $18,045,000, leaving us with revenues under expenditures currently at $470,000. Participation in our wellness centers. Uh, we've had 4,007 uh, patients visit our centers. Uh, Averaging about 668 a month, and you can see the breakdown uh, from the Oak Ridge Center and the Conroe Center. Remaining pretty steady. Our $109 million bond transition plan, uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $71.5 million. Uh, we estimate to complete on the projects of $34.4 million, leaving us with a projected forecast of these projects of, of $105.4 million, uh, leaving us with some contingency at the end of about $3.1 million. Our investments for the month, we ended January at $419 million. The end of February, $395 million. As you know, we had $50, uh, $70 million worth of debt payment. So that decreased a little bit. The WAM of our short-term investments, were, which are pools and Capital One, is one day, and that's yielding us a little over 16 basis points. The WAM of our longer term investments is 689 days, and that's yielding us about 73 basis points. The combined portfolio WAM is 82 days, and our combined portfolio is yielding about 23 basis points. And our benchmark, which is statewide, which is the 90 day T bill, is at two basis points. So we're outperforming our, our benchmark. And that is all. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rice, I have a couple of questions. If you go back to the investment slide there. Sure. On the on the Capital One, are we fully laddered out on that investment yet, or do we still have some to go? On the uh, on the long-term investments? Yes. We're completely laddered out now. Okay. Yeah. And how far out are we going? Uh, three, three years. Iteration? Three years. Three years. Okay. <clears throat> and it, how is it monthly that we're going to have 
things fall off the ladder? We that, is, that is correct. Right now, uh, we've actually, uh, you know, we were going from the 18 months to three years, if y'all if y'all right. remember. We actually have some, you know, since we've instituted this, coming into the one year. We're holding on to those because those rates are so good. You know, we're holding those longer than the, than the 18 months. Okay. So it's really going to look good on our portfolio to have those one percenters. That's what I was kind of getting at. I think yeah. we've been doing this about a year, and I was just yeah. wondering. So, the, so, so our, so our, the amount that we have uh, out there long term is about 54 million dollars right okay. now. So in the in the three year category. Correct. Okay. Out to three years. Yes. Okay. Sir. All right. Thank you Mr. very much. Mr. Rice. Yes, sir. Our, uh, our investment policy says we can go three years. Yes, sir. That's a local policy. That right? is local. Yes, sir. The public investment policy says you can go how far? Ten years. Ten years? Mm hmm Are you sure that's a... That's a... Mm -hmm. All right. Um, thank you. Item 7A, uh, Region 6, EESC, Board of Directors Election. Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mrs. Galatis, will you introduce this item, please? Yes, Dr. Stockton. At your place, you have a little half slip of paper. This is um, somewhat unusual. It'll be a little bit weird, I'm thinking, for you. We have not done this really in the past because none of these positions have ever been contested, but we have one contested position this year. So what the instructions we received from the Regional Service Center and in compliance with the Open Meetings Act, you know, the action you take has to be open to the public. So I'm going to ask you in a minute for each of the three places on the ballot. Um, if you'll raise your hand, if you're going to vote for that person, and then if you do vote for that person, you need to mark your ballot accordingly. You don't have to vote for anyone if you don't want to. You did receive some information, I think, previously, kind of giving you some information about each of the candidates. And then we will collect those ballots and we will put them in the envelope we were provided by the service center and submit them to them so they can be counted and the board of directors for the service center can be determined. And so your candidate in place one, with only one candidate, is Virgie Dotson. And so any of you that are going to be voting for Ms. Dotson, if you'd raise your hand indicating you will. Um, and then if you're not raising your hand, I'm assuming you are not voting for Ms. Dotson or just not voting at all. So if you'll mark your ballot accordingly. That would be wonderful. We'll move on to place two. There, are, this is the contested race. You have Curtis Kimbrough or Jennifer Carlton are the two candidates. So if you're going to vote for Curtis Kimbrough, if you'd please raise your hand. Okay, no one. If you're going to vote for Miss uh, Carlton, if you'd raise your hand, and then mark your ballot accordingly, please. And then finally, in place three, Mr. Golson, Thomas Golson. If you're going to vote for Mr. Golson, if you'd raise your hand. And if uh, you're not, then mark your ballot accordingly, please. I appreciate it. You need that name on them? Uh, no, do not put your name on them. Just <laughs> pass them down to us. Well, we did it publicly. We pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's not effective. <laughs> yeah, we don't need Wait a minute. Know. There's a violation in the ballot box around here. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, thank All right. you. And uh, thank entertain you. a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you very much. We stand Second. adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. I know. You did it on purpose. did it Yeah. I was going for the record. Ray just kept asking the question. I told him I'm going to keep my record.